Hey, it's me. Did you know that in the universe, there are 12 basic active forces and 12 basic passive forces? It's like different energies or principles that exist all around us. Some teachings talk about how these forces are concentrated in the highest realms of light and are represented by certain entities, each one personifying an active or passive principle. They're all perfect in their own way. Now, I don't just want to talk abstractly about the universe. What's important is how this relates to us here and now. These forces aren't just out there somewhere. They exist within each of us. The whole universe is inside you and inside me. How we use and direct these forces inside us shapes our lives, our harmony, and our happiness. So I propose that the question become, when should we be active and when should we be passive? When should we use our free will, which is an active force, and when should we step back and be passive, letting things unfold? Sometimes we think that to follow God's will, we need to be passive. That's a misunderstanding. To truly fulfill God's will, we need to be active and use our willpower, not in a selfish way, but in a way that aligns with higher principles. Problems happen when we use our active energies in situations where we should be passive, and vice versa. If we push actively against things we can't change, we end up feeling frustrated. Now, if we're passive when we should be taking action, things tend to stagnate and we feel stuck. So it's important for us to figure out where we should be active and where we should be passive. So let's shed some light on just that. First off, we should always be active in following what three and sticking to principles we believe in, our values. And that takes willpower and commitment. Even people who aren't religious have strong morals or tend to have strong morals. And they know deep down what's right and wrong when they honestly ask themselves. Where we often go wrong is trying to change things we can't control, like other people or certain situations. We might know intellectually that we can't change others, but emotionally, we still get upset when things don't go our way. We become active in trying to force change where we should actually be accepting and letting go. Whenever you feel a strong emotion like anger, anxiety, or resentment, it's helpful to ask yourself, what do I really want? What do I really want? Usually, there's a desire behind that emotion. Desire is an active force. Sometimes our desires are positive, like wanting to grow, to love more, to overcome our weaknesses. And for these, we need to be active and put in effort, absolutely. But sometimes our desires are negative. When we feel resentment or hatred, we might desire something that's not right or not possible. We might want someone else to change or a situation to be different in ways we can't control. And it's this misdirected active energy that leads to frustration because those desires can't truly be fulfilled. So in situations where we can't change things, our attitude needs to be one of acceptance, accepting what is. Accepting what we can't change doesn't mean we approve of it or want it to stay that way forever. It just means we recognize that right now, right now we need to let go of trying to force things. This frees up our energy to focus on what we can change ourselves. By letting go of misplaced active desires, we can serve our strength for the areas where we can and should be active. We can use that energy to work on ourselves, to grow and to make positive changes in our own lives. Now, it's important to remember that even people who seem passive on the outside might be using a lot of energy internally, pushing against things they can't change. This internal struggle can drain them and affect their health 
and peace of mind. So how do we start recognizing our real feelings and our real desires? It begins with self-awareness. We always come back to self-awareness. When you feel a strong emotion, take a moment to ask yourself, what's behind it? What do you really want? Yeah, that's going to take some practice, but over time, it becomes a natural habit, almost automatic. You might notice that you're wanting someone else to change or a situation to be different than what it is. Recognizing this allows you to see where you're using active energy in the wrong place. Then you can redirect that energy toward yourself, where you have the power to make changes. Sometimes you'll also discover conflicting desires within yourself, wanting two things that can't both happen. Becoming aware of these inner conflicts helps you understand yourself better and move toward maturity. Our unconscious desires are often immature, kind of like a child's desires. We can talk about inner child work here. We might want things without being willing to pay the price, or make the necessary effort. By bringing these desires into awareness, we can start to address them realistically as well. So understanding your real desires often brings a sense of relief. It explains why certain things in your life are the way they are and helps you trust in the fairness of the universe and empowers you to take responsibility for your life instead of feeling like a victim or blaming others. God, higher power, wants us to be independent and strong, capable of running our own lives. We can't expect divine intervention to fix everything for us while we remain passive. When we align our active energies correctly and accept what we can't change, we start to influence our circumstances positively. Our inner harmony affects those around us too, leading to more truthful and harmonious interactions. There's a ripple effect. Now, you still might be wondering, what is God's will for me? What is God's will for me? And it's important to understand that fulfilling God's will doesn't mean being passive or without willpower. It actually requires us to be active in overcoming our inner resistances. We often confuse God's will with our own self-will, the will of our ego. Self-will is about our personal desires and attachments. Free will is the ability to choose, and we can use free will for good or bad. To find God's will, we need to set aside our self-will and use our willpower to face ourselves honestly. And that means acknowledging our true desires, even those we're not proud of, and bringing them into the light. When we do this, we usually find that God's will becomes clearer to us. It's often aligned with our higher selves, the part of us that seeks growth, love, and harmony. So if you're facing a difficult situation or decision, don't expect an external sign to tell you what to do. Look within. Examine your desires, motives, and any inner conflict. Ask yourself honest questions and be willing to change if you recognize that something within you is contributing to the problem. Combining self-examination with prayer or meditation can help as well. When we make the effort to understand ourselves and align with higher principles, we often find that guidance comes more easily. In the end, the key to knowing God's will lies within us. It's about recognizing where we've strayed from our own values or from spiritual laws, even unconsciously. As we become more aware and adjust our actions and attitudes, our lives begin to change for the better. And remember, this isn't about judging ourselves harshly. It's about being honest, accepting both our strengths and our weaknesses and actively working toward growth. By doing so, we tap into a deeper wisdom and find a path that leads to greater harmony and fulfillment. Let me know if this resonates with you. If you ever want to talk more about it, I'm here for you. Love you. Connect soon.